we just got our microphone set up. Can you all hear me all right? Cool, lovely. Thanks so, so much for joining us tonight. It's going to be a great night. Really looking forward to it. Hello, and you are listening to Head Teacher Chats Live Spaces. And tonight we've got an exciting topic to discuss. Uh, the launch of the renowned BBC's 500 Word Story Writing Competition, where we'll cover everything you need to know about participating. And we're thrilled to introduce our special guests, Anthony, Simon and Helen, who will share their insights and expertise. I'm Lucy. And I'm Jonathan, and we are co-founders of Head Teacher Chat, experienced school leaders and dedicated to supporting those who work in education. So this is the UK's most successful children's writing competition and it originally started on BBC Radio 2, you probably remember it with Chris Evans in 2011 and since then nearly a million stories have been submitted by children. And yes it is a great concept, children of all backgrounds and abilities can be invited to unleash their creativity and imagination without worrying about spelling punctuation or grammar. The only rule is the word count. It must not go over 500 words. Yep, and there's two age groups, five to seven and eight to 11 years old. And it opens next Tuesday, the 26th of September, 8 a.m. And it closes on Friday, the 10th of November at 8 p.m. And we have a load of- Yeah, you're really excited about the on here. <laughs> I know, yeah. and there's award-winning authors that are, and who's, who's joining us on? So we've got Frank Cultural Voice, who's one of your favourites. Oh yeah, I do like many you've, of his books. You've read lots of his stories. Yeah, so. especially as a class reader. Yeah. And the children love it. Yeah, I've done lots of Horrid Henrys with, uh, so Francesca Simon's going to be joining in, and so is Charlie Higson, and the former Children's Laureate, Mallory Blackman, will also be participating. But not only that, we, we also have... have I feel like we need a drum roll. Yeah, but you do. We also have the children's author and TV legend, Sir Lenny Henry. Yeah, and the prizes are fantastic as yeah. well. Um, I, did, I, I did have a, a thought about the prizes because the gold winner um, gets the height of Sir Lenny Henry's in books and 500 books um, for the school. And I hear that um, Sir Lenny Henry is quite tall, so that <laughs> yeah, is a lot lucky. of books. Yeah. And two <laughs> silver winners will receive the height of Her Royal Majesty Queen Camilla in books and two bronze winners will receive the average height for a seven and 11 year old. So, and not only that, but six of the most prominent children's illustrators will each design an illustration for the winner's stories. And these will be featured in the 500 Words Winner's Book. So why are we so invested in this competition, you may ask? Well, completely honest with you, we consider it an absolute privilege to inspire children to write and to foster a love of storytelling within our schools. And indeed, we are on a mission to get as many schools as possible involved in this because it will make a massive difference to the schools and to get children writing. Yeah, it's a magical experience to hear a child telling you about their story that they've written and to see them to get fully immersed in the world of stories. And it's so many um, benefits for the school leader because you can get the whole school writing at the start of year. You can find out what bits are, are going strong, if they need more paragraphs or they need a different uh, creative part of their writing. So it's a good way to uh, sort of like assess where they are at this point yeah, in time. Yeah, it's, really, it's a really good way to get children, A, loving stories, B, loving writing and C, it's a good snapshot of writing across your school, especially if you get everybody involved. And not only that, but imagine you'd have all that lovely writing to put on display, uh, ready for parents' evening in the autumn term. And we've listed all the benefits of taking part uh, on our website. And if you need more information, head over to the link in the chat after the show tonight. And all of the guidelines that we've written for you are in there. Um, but you can also head over to the BBC's 500 Words website where you will find a wealth of information, superb resources and fantastic information ready for you to go. So let's introduce our guests and who are going to share some insight and expertise along the way. Yes. Um, so 
First of all, we got Anthony McGinney, or head teacher of Galley Hill Primary School. I hope I said that right. <laughs> and we got Simon Hunt, otherwise, otherwise known, known as <laughs> yeah. Mr. Hunt from the front. Yeah. And Helen Freeman from Oxford University Press. This is Head Teacher Chat Twitter Spaces. We hope you enjoy it. Welcome everyone and thank you for joining us this evening. Now, um, Anthony, can you tell us a little bit more about yourself and how you got involved in the um, BBC 500 Words? Yeah, um, Anthony McGinney, head teacher of Galley Hill Primary School, as you mentioned before, um, in Gisborough. Um, and BBC 500 Words is something which um, I remember back as an NQT and in the early days of my uh, teaching career, having that kind of inspiration and getting the children uh, in year one when I was down there um, writing. Um, and then making sure now as a leader, we kind of keep pushing that writing uh, emphasis in school and that creativity in it more than anything else. I think you mentioned it before. It's it's a chance for children to take a take a foot off what we kind of put in the national curriculum side of it and look at that creativity um, and use all that reading expertise, what's going in on in the world around them, anything that they want to do they can have that as their kind of emphasis for their story. Um, and as a leader, it's making sure that we we give the children the opportunity for that, as well as having the, the staff have that kind of free reign, um, uh, because we know how important creativity is at the minute. It's one of those things that we talk about in terms of there's AI, there's all these other things out there, but how do we kind of foster that love of reading, of writing, of promoting creativity, of boosting their confidence? Um, and this is a chance to kind of elicit that out of it, really. Um, there's amazing things that you can get out of it. There's there's, there's prizes it's the fact that it's bbc it's the fact there's the kudos that comes with it it's the fact that anyone can get involved in it. it doesn't matter what your background is doesn't matter what what you can do if you can string a sentence together you can all really practice it and get that those words down on paper there's no kind of the time limit within that half an hour or an hour english lesson you've got that time to practice it really so for me as a leader it's about the engagement it's about getting children's love of writing back is one of the things that that we know is we've got that writing at the end of key stage two we've got criteria that we've got to go to there's all the pressures that might be with that and um, the research that came out in the summer of is writing literacy um, down below to pre-pandemic levels how do we get the love of writing back it's not about necessarily forming an end of key stage two writing criteria it's about making children love writing it's about getting their ideas um out there really and celebrating it whether it's in the school hall whether it's through a competition like like this and the 500 word competition it's got that kudos isn't it if, if you're seven or eight years old and you're there saying actually i'm about to send my work off to bbc 500 and i might win my someone's height in books and i'm going to have this and it might be published it, it gives them that emphasis on it and it's that holistic side of it which for me as a leader as a school we can drive forward and it's a whole school thing it's not one class it's not anyone else it's it's literally five to eleven everyone's in there everyone can get their ideas there um, and and that's what I really like about it and it's the it's I think that's great and I love the fact that you're allowing the children the freedom to write I mean uh, it's just just incredible, really, that we don't have as many opportunities as perhaps we should do nowadays to give children that freedom, you know. Um, but I, I can imagine it's magical in your school when the competition is going on with all the buzz of children's ideas coming out. And, you know, um, I imagine the discussion in the staff room with the teachers all getting excited about what the children are producing. It sounds fabulous. I mean, like, I, I can feel why it's important to get involved as a school, but from a head from a fellow head teacher's perspective, <laughs> how why do you think other head teachers should get their whole school involved? Uh, for me, it, it's that kind of buzz, isn't it? You get that buzz of writing at the beginning part of the year. You get that love of writing and, and you're not having to battle against it. The fact that you've got all the resources there and you don't have to worry about what it's going to be in terms of how you're going to resource it. How is everyone going to be doing those things? There's a live lesson to kickstart it all off. So you can create that buzz within that school, get the whole school community together. And, you know, as a leader, you've got them there. You've got that kind of awe and wonder. And you've got the fact that actually, you know, there's going to be some celebrity authors that are going to be looking at, at those bits of work 
I, whether you get through or whether you don't get through it's not about that it's about celebrating the whole process and doing it as a collective and I think if you can get that buzz for for writing in your school that's what we're all after isn't it is that kind of how do we get them to love writing how do we get them to put their ideas down there and this for me kickstarts that so whether it's the character whether it's the building the plot whether it's the endings whether it's that reading aloud to build their confidence you get all of that from this 500 word competition um and, and for me that's what we're after we're after children who can love who love writing into the reading can ver verbalize and talk about what it is that they're writing about no matter what their background is doesn't matter like you were saying before jonathan doesn't matter if they can string a sentence together or not it's getting their love of writing because it's only going to improve and that's the starting point absolutely and um what i mean we do things as um, head teachers put in school. How do you make sure that it is fully embedded in the school? Because, I mean, we do loads of things and initiatives, but how do you make sure it actually works? Have you got any top tips? Top tips. <laughs> Yeah, I, I think it's it's putting it at the forefront, isn't it? It's whether it's celebration assemblies, it's it's how you get drive that thing. So for for me, we're going to have that whole school assembly to kick started off. It's going to be in the newsletter, um, using prompts from um, other partners, such as, such as like Pobble. How do we get those ideas there? How do we get those pictures, those stimuluses, so they can have those little bursts of writing, which might actually help them um, put put their ideas down uh, for whatever it is that they're going to be. So yeah, next Wednesday, um, we'll be there for the live lesson. We'll all get into the hall, we'll kickstart it there. And for me as that leader, we drive it from the front. It, we get all the staff on board, we get all the children on board, we get all the parents on board and we create that buzz. And I think the more you put it at the forefront of everything that you're doing, the, the better writing that you're going to get. You get that buzz from it, um, as, as well as the community engagement and confidence from the children. Fabulous, Anthony. I mean, uh, I could imagine uh, just how fantastic it is in your school during the competition. It's, you know, there's nothing better, as we said before, than watching and listening to children writing and hearing them read what they've written and seeing their writing transform in front of you is, is such a magical experience. And the fact that you've got your whole school involved, I think, is fantastic. So well done to you, Anthony. It's fantastic to hear what you're up to. So um, now we have a birthday boy. Oh, we do. <laughs> we do. Um, I won't sing this time. No, don't sing, Jonathan. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Everyone so, will turn off. Yeah. Happy birthday, Simon. It's lovely to have you on the show. And uh, would you like to tell us what you've been up to? Because I know you've been super busy. Yes. Um, hopefully you can hear me. Can you hear me okay? Perfect. Okay. Um, so yeah, it's it's my birthday, and like like you said, and it could have been any night, but I wanted it to be on my birthday just to show how dedicated I am to the cause of five hundred words because I wouldn't do anything else apart from talk about five hundred words for the next half an hour. So my name is Mister Hunt. That's my teacher name, my human name. So for the purposes of the rest of this uh, chat, we can use my human name, which is Simon. Um, some of the kids they might find this podcast that they're going to love finding out my human name. But um, so I got involved because basically because I believe in the 500 words. I've used it as a teacher over the past few years. Um, I've been genuinely gutted that it's not been on for the past couple of years because it's something I really look forward to. And the reason why I look forward to it is because I know my kids look forward to it. And that, that's what it's all about. And so I got involved. And the reason why I got involved is because a competition like this for me is that when I was in primary school, I struggled with spelling struggle with grammar and all that type of all that side of writing but i loved writing i had some fantastic ideas and a competition like this would be just the right thing for me because i had all these amazing ideas actually but i was always worried about using um i don't want to use this word because i don't know how to spell it so i'm going to stick to the really basic word i'm going to use big instead of gigantuan or colossal because i'm because that's what i'm comfortable with and something like this sort of it kind of it unchanges, it releases shackles a little bit and it just gets it gets creative. And that's why I'm part of it. And because from my viewpoint, um, you know, I, I'm going to teach this with my kids next week and we're doing this as a whole school as well. And there may be one, two, three or four children in your class that maybe in the future in 10, 20, 30 years might become an author. And that might be because that create that that flame was um, lit in your classroom because you gave them the creativity, you gave them the chance to just express themselves. And if one child does that, of all these uh, thousands of children that enter this competition, if one child becomes an author because of this, or even just enjoys writing, then I think it's really worth it. I think it sounds fantastic. And you're absolutely right. I mean, imagine uh, the impact on our children across the UK, really, on, the, on their writing, if we all get together and get children involved. And that's kind of why we're 
on a mission tonight, aren't we, Jonathan, to we kind are. of get as many schools to join in and to participate as possible. So thanks, Simon. That's really helpful. And is can you tell us, is it easy for teachers to join in? Is it is it tricky to do or or is it's... it you need there? It's really simple. Basically, this morning we had a meeting before the before school started, and I went down to our key stage two, and I said, "Right, we're going to enter a writing competition, five hundred words." And obviously, at the start of the year, we're third week in. How much extra work is this going to take me? What extra stuff am I going? To, I'm still my display is still not fully up in the back corner. I've got to laminate this thing. You've got all these little things. I still don't know everyone everyone's name in my class. You've got all these little things buzzing around. What's this extra thing? But the thing is, it's not. Because it's because it's run with the BBC, Oxford University Press, they're, they're part of it as well. And if you look at the booklet online, there's loads of really wonderful resources that I gave to my class, my teachers today and said, right, this is what we can use. Brilliant, it's done for us, Simon. We can, we can use this and we can use this with our children. Um, on the website, there's some really nice inspirational vi videos for five to seven, specific for five to seven and also seven to 11. And they mirror each other as well. So if you're in year three or year four, for example, you might need to dip into the five to, five to seven videos videos you can do that because it mirrors what you do it mirrors the videos in the 7 to 11 and also you've got the virtual staff room as well so there's some tips and i mean i'm not just saying that because I'm, on, I'm in that little bit as well but um, there's some top tips in the virtual staff room as well just for support and guidance for teachers so everything you need is all on the website and all this all the stuff there is really really good and there's um fabulous Apologies for the sound there. There's some fabulous uh, judges as well, aren't there? Frank Cultural Voice, Francesca Simon, Charlie Hickson. They're all going to be sharing their writing tips and answering questions from schools during the live lesson as well, which is really, really great. But, you know, it's, it's not just like a really wonderful opportunity to get children writing, but it's a really easy way to get all children writing, isn't it, Simon? It's really accessible for all. Can you tell us a little bit about that? It is. So in my schools, we, we are called Tottington Primary School, an inclusive school for children with physical disabilities. So we have quite high SEN and lots of different needs in our school. Um, but we do, we use things like um, assistive technology. Um, we we have children that maybe struggle with handwriting. So what we'll do is we'll, you know, we'll get them to dictate into an iPad or to a, a device. And then so their ideas are still flowing. It's still their ideas. It still works. So we're kind of removing those barriers. So anything you can do, to remove a child's you know if there's a barrier there we as teachers we're kind of there to try to remove those barriers to get them creative to get them writing because writing doesn't have to necessarily be a pen on paper it can be anything it could just be speaking it could be like i said dictating um and we have you know the, if you look on the on the virtual staff room on the website and and there's some tips there if you have children with those specific needs because the, and the examples that it's used in there in that video and some of those videos are examples from my classroom from my actual class with my children and the the nice thing is it's my children talking about how they use that these 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 resources these things these techniques to help them write and it's from the heart and honestly if you if you get to ever get to watch them they're just lovely and there's a couple of children there that just really speak from the heart but yeah so it's um accessible for all and also um as a lovely. teacher oh sorry from the heart. Oh, sorry, I had a bit of feedback there. And yeah, sorry about that, guys. Um, but yeah, so um, accessible for all. And just to, it's, we want to have as many children to get involved and to enter as possible. And that's what the Farage Word Competition does. I think it's great. And you've done some really good videos on the BBC website uh, with some top tips on making it accessible for all children, no matter what their barrier is, if they have a barrier. And uh, I love, you know, it's such a simple idea, but I really love your uh, dictate to iPad idea. I think it's such a powerful way of getting children to think of their story because often they've got their story in their head, but they can't get it down onto paper. So to get a child to dictate their story into an iPad, the iPad then types it live as they're talking. They can see the words in front of them and then they can write it and put put it in their writing. It's a really powerful idea, Simon. I, I I really love that idea. So all those all those information, top tips for teachers. There's lots of resources on the BBC 500 Words website, um, and uh, you can have a look at Simon's videos there too. So thanks ever so much, Simon and Thank Anthony, you. for joining us. And happy birthday, Simon. But we've got 
the most amazing research to talk oh, about now, yeah. which will blow your minds away. I'm I'm so excited to talk about this because you know it's such a good idea. You know, a million stories. Yeah, and all those that information, all the types of stories that they um write in, what the keywords, the key names that are used in it. I mean, and we're lucky to have Helen. We are very lucky to have Helen. <laughs> to um, talk about what um, Oxford University Press have um, done with the research within it. Yeah, welcome Helen. Thank you. Thanks for having me. What was found out from all the research? I mean, it is fascinating stuff. And why, what, I mean, what am I trying to say is, is I like, <laughs> yeah. um, the research that you did, can you tell us a little bit about it? Um, well, we've been doing this research from way back um, and at Oxford University Press, we are all about research and insight and tracking how children's language changes over time. Um, and it's been a complete treat that we've been involved with um, 500 words because it means, as you say, we get all of this data, um, every single word of every story that's been submitted has come to Oxford University Press and it gets put into the Oxford Children's Corpus. Um, many people don't know what a corpus is, but it's basically a huge electronic database of children's English language. It's the biggest in the world, uh, which is appropriate for Oxford University Press because we are also the biggest university press in the world. So we're all about doing things in a big way, and this is all about big data. So basically what happens is we get all of the stories they're anonymised, so we don't know the children's names, but we do know the children's ages, and we also know the gender of the child submitting the stories. Um, and the reason we want that data, and also actually broadly geographical area um, where the children are writing, and the reason we want that sort of data is we can then do analysis to see if there are differences around the ways that boys and girls write, um, the things they write about. We can look at things that are trending by age or gender or where, where they live. Um, and I, I guess it's a blend of really serious things. So for a university press, we create lots of um, reading and learning resources for children. So we're looking at technical aspects of writing spelling, use of punctuation, but not for tests or assessments. We're looking because we're interested in learning how children use punctuation, how they spell. We can see regional differences in spelling. Some you might expect and others not. Things like mam, mom or mum. We look at how language changes over time. And that's what's so wonderful about 500 words. We've been doing this analysis for coming up 10 years. And through that time, we can track uh, trends, we can look at how um, vocabulary changes and how children really make language their own. So there's lots of, of language analysis. We look at particular themes. Um, we can also see, and this touches on some of the things we've already talked about, that um, when children are invited to write a story, not for an assessment or an exam or any kind of test, but for the sheer love of writing, all the guards come off and they're completely brave around wordplay. They do all sorts of crazy sort of mashups. They play with their writing style. You can see influences in genre. So lots of influences maybe from things like fairy tale, um, characters that they've come across. So it's, it's a great way for children to play with language, play with the idea of story and genre. So there are some serious things that children can really flex in their writing skills. Um, and then we can also see just wonderful, insightful things about what are children thinking about? How do they engage with the world around them? We've seen technology come and go. So children some years back wrote about Blackberries. Does anyone remember Blackberries? And now everyone's talking about their mobiles and their iPhones. And so um, you can see technology trends come and go. Um, but more than that, you see how children might take a word that as an adult you would think means a certain thing, but 
but children will take that word and use it in completely different contexts and they're 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 totally free and we've touched on this they're free to write what you know the story they want to tell about the characters that they invent sometimes real sometimes imagined um and we just learn so much about it um we do sentiment analysis so we look at whether the stories are on balance more positive or more negative or serious. And the nice thing is this, it always comes down on the happy and positive side, which is lovely. Um, and we can see the influences on children, both the games they like playing, some of the gadgets that they'd really love to own. Um, and occasionally a mum or dad or parent will enter a story and, and tell a character to get off their devices. So you see this mix of sort of reality and fiction. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's just every single time we do the analysis, there's so much that we learn. There are always surprises. And there are some things that every, every time we've done the analysis, we're eager to find out. Is it going to be different this time? And one of the things that I particularly love is every single year that we've done the 500 word story analysis, Santa and Cinderella have always been the top fictional or mythological characters. And um, Lucy and Jack, whoever they may be, have always been um, the top named boy girl characters um, in children's stories that they make up regardless of what names are trending or celebrity influences there are they it's always been the same Jack and Lucy are our top girl boy characters in the stories that children write well, yeah, you were quite glad about I, that I'm one. very <laughs> pleased about the late Lucy I think it's of the best <laughs> names cheese but Helen, I mean, I was reading the uh, most recent report that you did about, well, the Oxford University Press did about uh, the findings, and I loved the unusual story starters. Um, one uh, young lady who was nine years old wrote, I found myself on a beach. I must have got washed up here. I don't remember anything before now. All I know is that I am here and I am alive. I mean, I mean, it's just like you can feel how, in you know, how excited they are about their writing and how invested they are in, in, um, in it. And then there was another one that was um, an invented creature, which was uh, written by another young lady who was also nine years old. And she invented her creature and she called it a Socktopus. And it was a creature that eats socks. And I thought, you know, it's just lovely. It's that's the magic of children's writing, and and that's what we kind of want to get across to schools. You know, we want as many of you to join in with the competition as we can. Imagine the impact across the UK if we could get all our children loving writing um, between now and November for this competition, which would be great. So, Helen, how do our schools? take part in your research how do they do that um so the really lovely thing is that every single story when it's submitted to the bbc as part of the 500 words competition within the entry terms and conditions it automatically submits every story albeit anonymized so we don't ever get any of the details of of the individual children just just gender and age, so that that helps us with our analysis. So we receive a big bundle of data, which is the stories, and then that goes into um, our Oxford Children's Corpus. We then conduct the analysis, and ahead of the competition, we will share our analysis, um, which will unpack the many twists and turns, um, the characters, we'll find out if Santa and Cinderella and Jack and Lucy till, still occupy the top slot. Um, and we'll, we conduct all sorts of analysis, look at what's, what's trending, um, and we tease out all of those um, pieces of analysis, some of them technical and really informative, and I'd imagine any teacher and school leader would be fascinated by that type of insight. But equally, it's the, the way we unpack the research and the analysis. We do it in a way that it's really shareable and digestible. It's the sort of thing that 
within a school, you could easily share that insight with the children themselves so that they can find out how their story has added to this really important piece of research. Um, so even if they don't win a prize in the big 500 words competition, their story has still counted. It's added to this really important um, body of evidence and research that is long lasting and has an impact. So, you know, talk about a great thing for a child to know that what they've written is important and that someone's read it and analysed it and cares what they've written, even if perhaps they don't necessarily win Lenny Henry's height in books. That's great. And and uh, so how, so imagine we've all entered the competition. How would our listeners find out the results of this year's entries? So in terms of the competition, that all culminates in the, the BBC 500 Words final. In terms of the analysis itself, um, we put together a report. It's really digestible. It's not some heavy tome that is technical and, and um, hard work to wade through. It's, to it's, gri it's a gripping read, we like to think. Um, we put it into this lovely research, um, into a report. We make that available anywhere and everywhere. It's completely free. Loads of insight. We'll put it on the Oxford University Press website. We can share it with, with your listeners. We'll put it on the BBC website. Um, it's just so fascinating and it's got lots of surprising facts and data. Anyone that's interested in data will love reading this. There's so many nice things to learn about the ways that children invent characters, write stories and, and use their language for self-expression. So we can share that as and when it's released and you can share it on far and wide within your school, you know, within schools and share. I'd really say I'd encourage you to share it with children because it's so fascinating knowing what are all the other children that entered 500 words writing about? How are they using words and language? Um, and I think that's a great thing to do within a school community. Um, it's a great motivator to write more stories and think maybe you'll enter again next year. That's fabulous. Thank you so much, Helen. It's really, really helpful to hear uh, your fantastic work that you're doing uh, to inspire children with their writing and also to let school leaders know what children are thinking of. It's such an important thing, isn't it? It definitely is. So um, thank you, Simon, Anthony and Helen, for sharing your insights and expertise up there. Um, we created a guide. We have. And, and uh, we'll share the link on how to uh, access that after this spaces session, um, because we want as many of you as possible to join in. Um, we've created a guide from a school leader's perspective so that you can find out how to get your whole school involved. Um, and we'll put that link across at the end of the show. And if you want your school to be involved, all you have to do is go to the BBC 500 Words website where you find a lot of information, resources and tips and tricks to get you started. And you can even tune in to the live lesson on Wednesday the 27th of September at 11 o'clock. Uh, thank you for joining us this evening. We hope you found this session helpful. If you have any questions, reach out via um, direct message and we're happy to assist. This Spacer session was brought to you by Head Teacher Chats. Tune in to next week's Spacer session at 7.30 on Tuesday as we discuss the recent rise in behaviour issues in schools and what can be done about it. And here is our quote of the day to end this session by Ewan Colfer. Writing is like magic. If you write well, you can make people see things that aren't there. So thank you for joining us and thank you for our guests. Yeah, thanks everybody. Have a lovely evening and see you next week. <laughs>